Hello, it's Angel. I am back making a video. I have a lot of work that I need to get done today and I figured I would take you along with me while I try and get it done. One of the things that I was thinking about talking about today is transplants. I'm going to be doing some transplants. I have a lot of plants that need to be put into bigger pots, put into pots, a lot of different things that need to be done. I also thought it would be good because it kind of ties into what I've been thinking and feeling lately. Ever since I made the video I did last that explained why I say I love your guts at the end of every video, I it got me thinking about how awesome it was to have a friend that would come over regularly and I would go over to their house regularly and visit with them and talk to them and and you know it got me missing that kind of friendship and I feel like I am a transplant I said that to Jay when he was off for lunch today and he kind of looked at me like I was crazy but the reason why I feel like I am a transplant is because I was born in Texas and we moved away from there when I was one and then we moved to Salt Lake City and I lived there till I was almost 13 and then we moved to uh, down by Springfield Missouri and I lived there for the better part of you know 25 years and uh, I tried to move away once and onto a sailboat in Florida and a hurricane blew me back pretty quick. I now live up by the Kansas City area and I've lived here for about five years and you know I've made friends. I've made some really awesome friends in this area. It's just I, I think the difference is now I'm older and when you're older you know, you have a family to take care of, you have your jobs are a priority, you have all these obligations, and you also don't have as much energy as you had when you were younger. So your free time is is kind of used more sparingly. You don't really go out every night after you get off from work and you know, you tend to stay home more spent more time with my friends in Springfield because we had more time to to share there and uh, so I just have been a little melancholy about that and I got to thinking I you know well I've got I've got friends that come over and visit all the time I've got friends I can sit down and have a cup of coffee with and I have these friends that I get to visit with anytime I want to and that's you guys. Now I, I kind of feel like you're my imaginary friends. You know, I get to talk to you. There's some comments and stuff that I get to, you know, know you guys better through the comments and everything. So please feel free to comment down below. I think that with people, it's very similar to plants because you kind of have a lot of trauma when you transplant yourself. Definitely moving here was an upgrade in my life for sure and I'm so happy I did it. I wouldn't change it for the world. I just, you know, it, it's just harder. You know, you're established, you know your way to the grocery store, you know where everything is, you know the ins and outs of the town you've lived in, you know, Springfield I knew like the back of my hand, and you have to learn everything new when you move somewhere new. You kind of feel displaced and it's hard to, to get back into the swing of things and it's hard to, you know, start to feel comfortable and feel at home. Now, I don't know if anybody is football fans, but last night the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And, you know, a few years ago the Kansas City Royals uh, won the World Series. So, since I have lived in this area, I've got to see 
how amazing this town is and how they come together and that's so cool and so awesome i didn't have that in springfield there's no you know major sports teams or anything that everybody was so passionate about and salt lake i was young and you know not really from a family that followed sports much i feel like i'm kind of rambling and just saying words to say words this here is one of my projects today. I have two of them. They are some very sad looking ginger roots, but they have these sprouts going on. And I thought I would stick them in some dirt. So let's get to it. Okay, so these are the pots that I'm going to plant the ginger roots in. I've got two roots, so I'm gonna use two pots. What we try and do winter into spring is we have a big tote and we get the soil already in the tote so we have it on hand because we play in the dirt a lot. I have mixed some potting soil, some peat moss, uh, some older soil. I had some topsoil out in the backyard that was in bags and I didn't have anything else and I wanted to play in the dirt so I brought it in and I baked it in the oven to just kind of get rid of any you know insects and stuff because we're re really trying to be very proactive about like fungus gnats and definitely any kind of pests like aphid. The bag that I grabbed had like roots growing into it so I had to rip it. It was it was bad. It was bad scene. So I baked that in the oven and I just kind of mixed that in with everything so that I could kind of fluff up my dirt, make it more, but at the same time better because the potting soil I got is really good potting soil and the peat moss makes it all fluffy. You know, it has, it has some big sticks and some leaves and things <laughs> in here and I used a bucket that I guess uh, some rocks were in and some marbles, which I'll explain more about why the marbles. This is the dirt. So it looks, I mean, it's really good. It's dark, it's fluffy, it's soft. And I'm not worried about the not so good dirt very much because, you know, it's outnumbered by the better dirt and it's all mixed in and incorporated. So we've got a lot. and. We've got this already. I've got these pots here. Like I said, these big pots. And then I've got a bucket here with rocks. Now I don't have very many rocks and these holes down here are pretty big. So I don't want my dirt just falling out of the holes. So I'm gonna try and strategically place some of the rocks by the holes. And then my pot needs drainage you know it can't all be in there and compacted and stuff I want something at the bottom to keep the water flow from being able to leave easily well we were gifted uh, a bag of these I don't even know what you call them can you see them? Little clay terracotta things. And they're used for, you know, a hydroponic system. So I thought what I would do is dip those in the bottom and we'll see how those do. The drainage issue. And I'm just going to put enough down. So I have about that much room in the bottom of this pot that's just mainly drainage. That's not going to be dirt and all compacted. So it gives the water an escape. So my roots of my plants don't just sit in stagnant water and die. Because that will kill them. I've got all of my little terracotta thingies in there. The inside looks like can you see it and so I've got that all done now I'm going to fill it up with 
dirt. These pots are so big, I'm hoping I have enough dirt in this tub here that will fill up these two pots. And then I've got to re-fill up the dirt and the dirt tub with all the mix of the different dirt and wet it down and let it rest a minute. I've already wetted this down and let it rest for a little bit. So it's not clumpy and muddy, but it's fluffy and a little moist. Moist. Do you like that word? Are you against that word? Tell me. Tell me below. I'm curious. I'm curious because it seems like a lot of people these days do not like that word. So while I'm doing this, I'll tell you a little bit about why I might be finding marbles in here. <coughs> so if you watch my videos uh, at the beginning of my channel, which was about a year ago, I'm about on my one year anniversary of my YouTube adventure. That's exciting. Super exciting, over 300 subscribers. That's really awesome. And so if you watch some of the videos from the very beginning, you can see how we did our growing of the peppers last year. And last year we started the peppers in December, I believe. So they were pretty mature by the time I started doing my videos and the technique that Jay did with the peppers is he did this cup system that he had learned on YouTube University. He uh, had red solo cups. Well, we had some clear cups too and that's how we distinguished last year from what we were giving away and what we were keeping. What we were keeping was in the red solo cups and he would take a red solo cup and he would create drainage holes in the bottom of it. And he would put the plant in there and he would put the soil in there. And then he took another red solo cup that did not have drainage, drainage holes in the bottom of it and stuck the first cup inside of the second cup. And then he would just water into the second cup and that way it watered from the bottom and then once the roots started getting bigger, he filled this, he made a space in between the two bottoms of the cups by using a marble. And he put a marble in there and gave those roots room to grow inside the cup. So the plants got bigger because they had room to grow their roots, even though it wasn't inside dirt, it was inside the water inside the cups. Well, that technique was extremely tedious in watering because you had to sit down and oh. there's a marble. Can you see it? It's just a little, uh, they're called industrial marbles. It's not fancy marble. I was told I'm a marble snob. I'm kind of a marble snob, but it's my business. That's what I do. I do marbles. Okay, what was I talking about? The red solo cups, the marbles. Okay, so the marbles gave it space. Long story short, marbles are now everywhere. <laughs> Wanting to make sure that we have a lot of plants. We kind of fell short on the herbs and the flowers last year. And if you watched any of my videos, you realize we really had an issue with pests and rabbits, rabbits so bad. And it wasn't until I read an article a couple weeks ago that was talking about how marigolds are really good at keeping rabbits away. And that's one thing I planted a lot of two years ago was marigolds and I didn't have the issue with the rabbits in the backyard that I had with the rabbits in the backyard this year, or this past year. So, lots of marigolds are gonna be planted. We're trying to do this as naturally as possible. You know, we don't spray any kind of bug spray on our plants. I'm honestly, 
I don't judge my neighbors. I don't watch my neighbors. I honestly don't even notice my neighbors 99.9% .9 of the time. But trust and believe, if I walk by your yard and the edge of your grass and on your sidewalk is brown, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge you a little bit. And I don't like that. I think that's ugly. It's kind of ugly. But it's ugly to judge people. That's ugly. But Here I am trying so hard <laughs> to fight all these pests and grow garden, lots of different variety of plants. And you can't just live with some dandelions in your yard. Last year, we made some deep fried dandelions. And it was so funny because I had never deep fried dandelions before, but I heard about it, thought I'd try it. Went out, picked some dandelions because I knew they were organic. They didn't have anything sprayed on them. We don't do that at our house. Fried up these dandelion heads and I swear they tasted like shrimp. They so tasted like shrimp. So if you ever wanted to make a vegetarian po' boy sandwich, you could totally use fried dandelions as a replacement for the shrimp. So I think this one is about ready to have it. The root planted in there. See, I've got it full to here. It's pretty full. See, it's all fluffy. It's pretty dirt. It's pretty dirt. I have never done this before. I'm just going to look at this though. So I'll probably check this after I planted it just to see if I did it right. But I'm assuming, and we all know what assuming does, that since these plants have these sprouts growing up this way, that if I plant it laying flat like this to where they have a way to grow up, that would be the best way to plant that. I'm gonna push that down in there pretty good and then I'm going to cover it up with some dirt. And then what I'll do is I will water this really good after I get it in a place where it has something to hold the water that comes out of the drainage holes. Give that poor roots some water. They are so thirsty looking. I mean, look at that. See, isn't that the most thirsty looking plant you have ever seen? It's crazy. <sighs> All right, got those planted. They are now in pots and I've watered them in and hopefully my ginger will grow. So now on to the next project. Just today, I was watching a video on Roots and Refuge where she was talking about don't start your tomato plants just yet. And I will say that is a very good idea. Last year, I started my tomato plants very early and we had six foot tall tomatoes that we were planting outside and, you know, had to dig trenches to bury them well enough for them to establish the root system. and. It was a lot of extra work. Now, this tomato plant, this is a tomato plant. I don't know if you can see the whole thing here. This guy has a story. I did not plant this guy this year. I did not plant him in the fall of last year. I, I planted this guy when I started my tomato plants for last year and he kind of got lost this start did uh, we started these seeds and nothing grew from them so I started another round later of the ones that didn't grow he was a very slow start and uh, he just kind of got lost in the shuffle when we were planting everything outside and then when we brought in all of our plants from outside, we found this little tomato plant and he was probably only, you know, maybe three, four inches tall at the time. Well, now he is inside under a grow light and he has grown a lot, a lot. Now this is a summer of love 
variety from Wild Boar Farms. Something else I kind of wanted to talk about, and this is a little uncomfortable, but I'm going to talk about it right now because this is, you know, it was an experiment that I did last year and I don't think I said anything about it on any of my videos. Last year I went a little crazy buying tomato plants and I ordered a bunch of tomato plants from Wild Boar Farm. I ordered a bunch of tomato plants from Baker's Creek. Uh, we didn't do a good job of keeping track of what we had ordered from each place. So I wound up ordering duplicates of the same kind of tomatoes from both Baker's Creek and Wild Boar Farms. So I did a little experiment last year and I started the Baker's Creek seeds for the same plants as I started the Wild Boar Farm seeds from those plants. And I seen a huge difference. The Baker's Creek plants grew so much bigger and stronger and faster than the Wild Boar Farms ones. I'm not sure why that is. Now, I love the Wild Boar Farm varieties of tomatoes that they have. They have some amazing, unique ones. I'm just a little stumped on why they didn't grow the same because I grew them right next to each other in the same container. They were getting the same light. They were getting the same water. They were in the same soil. And I marked each plant, you know, the name of the plant and where it came from. And so that's why I know this. Well, Baker's Creek doesn't have the summer of love, but this is a wild boar farm one. And so I did have some trouble with it getting started and all of that. Well, I want to make sure that I get some this year and this guy definitely needs to be potted up for one thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off these stems so I can bury him deep in a deeper bucket. And then when I do that, I'm gonna take these stems, I'm gonna put them in water and see if I can propagate them so that I can have clones of this plant and hopefully they will be more established and be ready to go out this year so I don't have to wait a whole year to get a good tomato plant of this. But that is my next project. All right, so what I've got is I've got a five gallon bucket I've got holes in the bottom for drainage. I'm going to put these little terracotta pellets. I figured they would work good as drainage. And I'm running low on rocks, so I'm going to use what I got. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tomato plant and I'm just going to take it out of its container that it is now. And I'm going to set it all the way in the bottom of this so I can bury as much of that tomato plant as possible and try really hard not to break it. <laughs> Alright, see? I've got him out and then I'm just going to set him all the way down here in the bottom. Okay, I'm going to take these scissors and I'm just going to cut off these here and I'm cutting way up but I'm doing this just mainly to get some starts really and now I'm going to bury it with my dirt I tried to do my hair all cute and it wasn't working for me so it's kind of a hot mess and then I did these little things and they are kind of driving me crazy. I'm not used to hair in my face. So I've got him you know tied to a stake. I only found some short ones but it'll do for right now. All right so here are the leaves that I cut off of the tomato plant. I just stuck them in water. We will, I will put them under the lights and see if they grow some roots. Now that's chore number two down. So the next one 
is I have these basil uh, stems that I cut off that I propagated and you can look in there they definitely have roots they need to go into dirt so that I can start whole new plants from these I need to take off all of these flowers so I normally just use my thumb take them off uh, the basil isn't looking as pretty as I had hoped it would having some issues with it but I'm just gonna keep on keeping on because that's that's how we make our garden grow I'm just gonna cut these flowers off now I read that you can dehydrate these flowers and use them in tea if you like basil tea this is cinnamon basil so I have dehydrated a bunch of these flowers and the leaves whenever I prune them because they're having the same issue that I had with the tomatoes last year where they're growing up into the grow lights. They grow so, so fast. I've got to do this like once a week to these basil plants. I really need to put them online and try and sell them to people who would love to have them. Now with these, I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to fill these cups up with soil. Find a good piece of basil here. There's one. And then I'm going to make a good hole in there and try and get the roots down as straight as possible. Basil is not picky. Basil is tough. It's like the gangster of the herb world. Basil can take it. Except for cold. Get basil cold and it's out. It's like done. This is the part where the big tub of dirt is very handy. When you're filling up cups, you just scoop and go. It's a lot easier to me than uh, a smaller container or even the bag because we like to fluff, we use so much. We like to fluff it up. You know, if we put the peat moss in there, it helps keep hold the moisture longer. It's good for starting plants and things like that. So. We mix the potting soil and the uh, peat moss and it's just way easier to scoop it up out of the big bucket. Okay, so I got all of the basil planted. Now my shamrock, I am going to cut it down completely to the bulbs and then pull out all the bulbs and separate them and top it off with some good fresh dirt, put the bulbs I want in the good fresh dirt, and then separate the ones that I'm not going to need into cups so that I can give them away. So this is one little bulb of the shamrocks. And separate all of them. I'm just gonna break them all apart. Well, it is now 8.30 at night and I haven't gotten everything done, but I got a lot done today. Hello, it's the next morning. Uh, last night worked until pretty late trying to get things done. I got quite a bit done. Jay came home from work. He decided to start on the peppers. He also hooked up our third shelf lighting system. So we are all set up and ready to grow. So we've got a lot that got done last night. The two things that I wasn't able to get done that I was hoping to get done is uh, starting some strawberry seeds and I will probably do a video on that later this week and then there is the dragon fruit cactus and this poor guy has been neglected so bad 
He has been growing since for a year now, for a year now. We started the seeds and we need to separate them. Jay is planning on making a stand so that we can put them in a big pot because we wouldn't be able to keep them outside all year. A big pot for it to grow and be able to get as big as it needs to get. Now, look at this poor guy. He is so, he's, he's a trooper, man. This, this plant is a trooper. Here, let me show you. This is three dragon fruit seeds. Three seeds that started this. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to break these apart and I have heard that you cut the end and allow it to dry for three days so that it won't be wet and rotting when you transplant it. So that is on the agenda for today or this week. So I just wanted to say in terms of my transplant video and of me being a transplant, plants are traumatized by the transplant. It stunts their growth a little bit, but it can be better for them in the long run. Uh, we've got a bunch of plants this year and our attempts at trying to not transplant them very many times is going to be the biggest challenge for us because of space. But I have confidence that our transplants are as strong as I am and they will find a way to make their roots grow and become big wonderful plants for us. Just wanted to say thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the like button, comment down below if you would like to be one of my imaginary friends, and subscribe if you would like to watch more videos. Also, we're on Facebook and Instagram if that's a thing you do. It's something I'm trying to do. So, hopefully I'll see you again on the next video. You all have a wonderful day. Love your guts.